First thing I want to talk about is with Joelle. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to tell us a little bit about how this Cam one? Girls came about. So Cam Girls was actually the first pilot I wrote about like eight years ago now. Um, and uh, I gave it, I was working as a writer's assistant and I gave it to my friend David Slack here for notes. He was starting a production company with his wife, uh, the lovely Kate Bond, who is actually behind you, who's our star and executive producer. But Katie and I actually ended up going and developing it for the web, which was essentially taking the pilot that I had and um, breaking it up like kind of by the act break, um, making that be the episodes and kind of making sure that each episode ended with like, you know, a big punch. David, how, when you got involved, how did this come about? My, my wife's an actor and uh, uh, she was at a point where, you know, uh, she came to me and she's like, I'm really tired of taking classes and going to casting director workshops and for what I'm spending on those, we could just make something. Uh, how would that be? And I was like, great, let's do it. It was an, an interesting level of freedom to take on a project like this and not have, you know, in, in my day job, I'm, you know, a co-EP -E, co on, I was a co-EP at the time on Person of Interest for four years. And there are so many levels of approval for anything you want to do. And so to be sitting there on set shooting this and be able to turn to Joel and just be like, I think it should be that. What do you think? And then we talked for a second, and then that was that. And that was the end of the discussion. I want to go to Diara now. Um, she did a thing called American Cocoa. Yeah. So do you care to tell us how this came about, what your background is as an actress and stuff like that? I was feeling very disempowered as an actor. Um, and so I said to my then boyfriend, um, we need to make something. And luckily, um, his sister was just graduating from AFI. And so we put together, I wrote this web series and we put it, we put it together. I think a month later, I was staffed on um, Mysteries of Laura. Um, and I was there for a year. And then I started um, just pitching and have sold a couple of shows. And every time I walk into the room, the first thing they say is, oh, we love your web series. Sam. You wound up doing the first web series before a live studio audience. Mm -hmm. Why? I was also a writer's assistant. Uh, I was on a cable comedy. I was like, I can do better than this. Um, but the other thing that I really appreciate about the live studio audience is it helps the actors pop a little bit more. Um, it makes the writing, you have to be um, hard comedy a little bit more. But I was tired of writing pilots. Um, I had done that for a long time. I wanted to work with a cast. I mean, if there's one thing uh, for people here maybe to take away tonight is do not underestimate collaboration. You do not have to do this all by yourself. In fact, you probably can't. So, Richard, Stage 32. It's an amazing site. It is the resource for everything you will need to get your web series done. So this embryonic idea of stage 32 was kind of sitting there because I was starting to write at that point and I was looking for people to collaborate with. So I started asking people, you know, what do you, what do you do to network? What do you do to network online? And I found that a lot of people, a lot of writers, a lot of directors, a lot of actors were having the same experience that I was having. And that was that they were just not getting any traction online. They weren't finding a network. So I decided to start stage 32. Mr. L.A. Webfest, my God. How do you start a festival? I mean, what is it? What do you sit at the kitchen table and say, I'm going to start a festival? No, really, you know, like a lot of things, it started by accident. I just kept saying, you know, we really need to get each other together, get out, of, get out of our homes, away from our laptops and desktops, and just get together in community like they do in the movies. Cam Girls. What has it led to? We did it as a WGA signatory, so I actually got into the guild because of it. Katie had gotten her first recurring off of having that stuff for her reel, um, and Joelle, you know, got in the guild, got her first work produced, and had, you know, this really good experience and interesting sample, and I had my first directing credit, and something that as, you know, somebody on the road towards being a showrunner, I can drop that on somebody's desk and say, I made this for a fraction of what you're talking about making a pilot for, don't tell me I don't know how to do this. We own this, uh, and it's the only thing I own in 17 years of doing this for a living. It's the only thing that I own aside from one other unproduced pilot. So that's kind of an interesting thing, but it also means that, uh, you know, the companies who are very savvy about this stuff and they want to be able to own the content in, in a way that gives them total control over it, it, it makes it a different conversation. So, uh, it, and nobody knows what to do with web stuff. It's it's such a wild west. Like even the companies that are out there in it, they're like, 
well, last month this was working, but now it's not. So it's it's very strange. I did decide to make the second season, but through a platform. And it's new, and we are the guinea pigs. It's um, called ABCD. It's the ABC Digital. And they're trying to do something that feels younger and hipper and and my show is super irreverent there's no standards and practices on the web right now um i have control over the production company that they pair me with i'm still co-directing i'm still starring i'm still producing they said i can bring back my entire cast and they the notes that they've given me on my script are super minimal and actually they're right we made so many mistakes, guys. Um, so many. And you will make a mistake, and that's okay. This is a very long learning process, I feel. Um, one of the mistakes we made is we tried to make a cheap TV show for the internet, which actually made it a really expensive internet show. Um, <laughs> do not rent a soundstage. We, we spent a lot of money and made some critical errors. We made a show about craft beer because um, I love craft beer and we wanted to try to be like very specific about what we were doing. We made Big Bang Theory for craft beer fans. Craft beer people are snobs. They are community <laughs> fans. And so there was kind of a disconnect when we tried to market of like, what is, what is this show you guys made? And I totally understand where they're coming from. And like that is, that is a critical error that happened in the pre-production process. So like marketing, Marketing needs to begin before you even write anything on a page. People have this, if you build it, they will come mentality. Absolutely not true. Well, for Sam here, it would have been to find other craft beer people and market to them, get, you know, connect with them, um, speak with them six to nine to 12 months before they were ever going to shoot a frame of this thing. Because what you want to do is you want to engage people to the point where when you're ready to launch something, they're ready to watch it. There's a million craft beer companies in the world. You can call all of them, and you can call them up and say, hey, look, you know, I'm about to do this. You want to get, you know, I'll support you guys. We'll put the beer in the film. Whatever it is, whatever it takes, but you're building um, not only a brand for yourself, you're building awareness for yourself, and you're building uh, an audience for yourself and people that want to be champions of what you're doing. All right, and Michael. Uh, how do we get into your festival once we have our web series? Um, you apply. We have a website, LAWebFest.com, our new website. You uh, apply during the, that period of time. We review your show. We didn't, you know, different festivals have different ways of evaluating your show. I found the only way to evaluate your show and see if you're worthy is to watch every episode. If you had to do a web series today, what would you do? differently i i think if if we were going to do a new series from the ground up i think we'd think more about uh reproducibility lizzie bennett diaries which is probably one of the more wildly successful web series uh did that in such a way that they had something that they could produce simply they had a lot of content and they could have seasons and episodes and being able to do that uh over and over again it, it's really about being a presence in people's lives in a way that uh maybe the first season of a television show doesn't have to be um, but I mean, we, you know, we made a pilot, uh, we made a TV pilot and the problem with making just a TV pilot is that you can put it out there and people are like, great, I want to watch the next 10 episodes. Right. It's like, okay, like, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I made the same mistake that they made, which was, I'm, I made a big production. I made a, t a t television show and not really a web series, but, um, it worked out. You know, it worked out. It didn't go viral, but it people began to see me as a television writer, and I was able to make my living as a as a writer and an actor after that. Um, but if you're trying to make a web series that's going to go viral, everything that they said is just so right from the marketing, from really finding out what the whole is, what what. What can you make that is so specific and so cool that you've been dying to see your whole life and nobody managed to think to do it yet? Like you have to be so specific, really think beforehand um, and start marketing beforehand, start making vines and loops and all that stuff to get people excited. I was doing a web series again and I will because I still do that. I would write something I love. I wouldn't care about views or going viral. No one can predict going right. viral. Right. Do what you believe in. Do that. Do that idea you can't do in TV. You can't do in film. Show that family that you don't see on television that you want to see. Maybe it's your family. Do it because again, if this is your swan song, this is all you're ever going to do, and you look back on this 20 years ago, at least it's something you cared about. 